Congenitocidal megalovirus, or CCMV, is a virus that is the number one cause of non-genetic deafness in babies. If a pregnant woman contracts the virus, she can pass it on to her baby. One out of three do. One in 200 babies are born with congenital CMV in the U.S. Not all will develop abnormalities, but there is the worry of things cropping up as a child gets older. To date, there is no vaccine for CMV, but my guest today is with Moderna, who has a vaccine in trial, so there is hope. And she is Dr. Jacqueline Miller, Senior Vice President of Therapeutics, Infectious Diseases at Moderna. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. All right, we're just getting around to testing babies at birth in this country as part of protocol. Minnesota was number one. Connecticut is number two starting next summer. We don't educate people enough about what CMV is. Tell me about that. Because if you ask most women, they will tell you, I've never heard of it. I completely agree with you. And this is actually a virus and an infection we should be talking more about. I think the reason why most women and actually most people haven't heard about uh, CMV and congenital CMV uh, is because CMV, while it's an infection that actually will infect most of us at some moment in our life. In fact, uh, by the time a child is in kindergarten, about a third of them have been infected. And by the time a woman is about 40 years of age, about half of us have been infected. Despite that prevalence, um, the symptoms actually for most people are thankfully mild. And, um, and most of the time an infection goes unnoticed. Someone goes from being negative for the virus to being positive for the virus. Unfortunately, this virus, unlike many other viruses that you can clear and then move on, this is a virus that's in a family of so-called latent viruses. Latent because they can infect you, be actively replicating, and then remain latent or quiet in your body for many years before they reactivate. And so um, what this means is that uh, you can have had an infection 20 years before, even if you're positive for the virus, you can either be reinfected with another strain or reactivate that virus and still pass the infection to your baby. But in light of the many different uh, issues that women go through during pregnancies, the many guidances that obstetrician gynecologists have to give pregnant women about staying healthy. This is just not one that gets top billing, uh, but hopefully the work that you and others are doing uh, in the congenital testing in Minnesota and Connecticut can start to change that. All right, where does Moderna stand in its trial? Because I've been following you closely. Where are we with it? So we have uh, completed our phase one and phase two trials, which we really uh, conducted in order to um, select the dose and the vaccination schedule. So we've done that. The dose is a 100 microgram dose. It's given three times uh, at uh, when a woman starts the schedule, two months later, and then six months after the initial schedule. Uh, the phase three trial, which is testing that schedule against women who receive placebo or a saltwater vaccine um, is ongoing. And that trial is actually measuring the ability of the vaccine to prevent infection in women who are currently negative for the infection when they start the trial. Um, so we have now completed enrollment. We are in the process of uh, conducting uh, the follow-up. In any efficacy trial with vaccines, unfortunately, you need to capture cases in people who got the saltwater control uh, vaccine in order to compare whether the vaccine is able to prevent infection uh, relative to the rate that happens in the background or in the saltwater control. So we are now accumulating cases and believe we may be ready for an interim analysis at the end of the year, but the case accrual rate uh, will be the determining factor. So a vaccine would be how many years off? And of course, that's just a guess. Yeah, I would say um, including the time it would take us uh, also to file for the vaccine uh, to the regulatory authorities and for the authorities to review and approve, uh, we could have a vaccine as soon as 2026. 
but again, that's relying on a number of factors uh, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to report that date with more confidence as time goes on. So in the meantime, and correct me if I'm wrong, but basically practicing COVID protocol, if you are pregnant, wash your hands when you're changing the diaper of a, a toddler, don't share food with your toddler. And of course, busy mothers do that all the time and just try to stay as clean as you can while you're pregnant. That is absolutely uh, the case. So um, prevention actually starts and ends with uh, good hygiene practices. And it's exactly as you said, making sure you're washing your hands, especially after diaper changes because CMV can be shed through fluids like urine. Uh, making sure that you're not putting pacifiers in your mouth or, or food in your mouth, as you said, because CMV also gets shed in the saliva. These are main ways that women who are negative uh, can get infected. And there are so many other things that can happen to a CMV baby, including microcephaly, um, seizures, and on and on and on. And right now, an antiviral has to be administered within 21 days of birth to try to ward off any more damage. Absolutely. And um, really want to say that uh, while therapy is great and therapy is actually super important to institute as soon as a baby is diagnosed, so that's why Moderna also really supports uh, the bills uh, also working their way through Massachusetts and hopefully soon countrywide to diagnose CMV if it's pregnant at birth. The sooner you start, the better the outcome. But the best outcomes are for the infections that we prevent. And uh, that's why really uh, the hygiene practices are just so important. Dr. Miller, thanks so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. And I'll continue to follow your work and get a hold of me anytime you need me. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I really appreciate being here to share the story of CMV. All right, thank you so much. And if you would like to know more about CMV, you can go to the CMV Foundation website and the News 8 app. And of course, very involved in that yes. whole struggle, her granddaughter Bevan, uh, uh, dealing with CMV and, in, and legislation passed here in Connecticut uh, to test for it. So. Uh, very important Anne's life and she's helping to spread the awareness. And she's it's amazing what she's done. We're now mm -hmm. just the second state to test for it. Yeah. And they're pushing for national legislation. So yeah. great work. Great to follow that progress. Sure is. All right. We'll be back with more here in just a minute.